Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the audio system demo of the 2021 Kia K5 EX and its 12-speaker Bose audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review, we're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, look at audio inputs, controls, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, get on the road, listen to some sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a quick look at the car. Now in case you haven't heard, this is just a Kia Optima redone and renamed to match up with its global name, the K5. Shares similarities with corporate cousin Hyundai with their Sonata. It's available in multiple trims. This is the 1.6 liter. EX are pretty well packaged out, about $28,000. If you wanna see more on the EX, check the links in the description for our real world highway fuel economy test, as well as our full review. We always do these tests with uncompressed lossless WAV audio files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system and high quality binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory defaults. Let's go take a look at those now. In the 12 speaker Bose system here in the K5, you've got Bose CenterPoint surround technology. So if you toggle that on and off, you can hear, when I turn it off, it's gonna be a little bit more kind of to the side of us rather than in front, which is kind of counterintuitive. Actually, I take that back. It is a little bit more in front of us sounding now. So it's a bit more artificial sounding, a tad bit more hollow, but in general in this vehicle, I do think it sounds better. Other than that, you have your standard treble mid-range bass, front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance. Let's go through treble mid-range and bass now. I do like the responsiveness of this touchscreen. It's a little far away from my taste, especially on these side buttons when you're driving around. But overall, the system works nicely. Good amount of contrast. Not quite as nice looking as the Hyundai screen, in my opinion, but it's all quite functional. I also appreciate that when you're moving, the system doesn't lock you out of any USB menus or anything like that. Audio inputs on the K5, you have your standard AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay functionality, USB-A, and that is it. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, you don't have yourself a disc player, and you also don't have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack. Not the end of the world here in 2020, but still would be nice to see. Now, the smaller screen models, the lower trims, have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay functionality, but for some reason, the larger system does not. So you're not gonna get that with the navigation, Bose 12 speaker, everything that way. So you have to plug in your devices. For audio controls, you have a nice volume knob right here, good detents, easy to grab onto, and a volume rocker switch on the left side of the steering wheel. For track selection, you have your touch screen, you have your menus, you have these seek and track back and forth buttons there, the arc, passive, and then you also have track rocker right there. Speaker locations, this is a 12 speaker system. Oh, starting up front, you got one, two, three, four in the center, five, six, seven. In the back, you have eight over there, nine over there, 10, 11, and 12 deck lid subwoofer in the rear. Now we'll see as we get rolling, but it's interesting, a lot of Bose systems have a reputation for being bass heavy, especially in songs where it doesn't really belong. Not the case with this one. Bass is actually a little too light. So as we get going, I'll show you how it sounds a little better when you pump the bass up three or four clicks, but without it, it's a little absent. So that subwoofer, make it a little bit, but not as strong as a good trunk mounted woofer. All right, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto demonstrations. Now there's only one data USB-A port in the Kia K5, so we are gonna have to unplug our USB with the music. 
but it's very easy to get to, so we're already right in with our iPhone. We hit next, okay. Disconnected my other device, and you can see right there, Apple CarPlay. Don't have to do anything on the phone, super nice. I have not paired that device up before. You can see we have our Apple CarPlay readout, so you got your messages. It's kind of interesting that this little side screen is taken up. Maybe they wanted to keep the resolution kind of a, a good aspect ratio. And you can access some other Kia vehicle data, maybe. Not much, actually. It says, oh, there we go. Yeah, you just got to kind of slide. So you can have a map up there. You can have a clock, navigation things, temperature. So that's nice. You can have your actual um, uh, audio, like Bluetooth or something like that, if you don't want to use Apple CarPlay audio. Works pretty well. Responsiveness is good. Resolution's okay. Where's our settings menu? There we are. Settings. Everything works pretty nicely. All right, let's plug in Android Auto. Now, this, this device has been paired via Bluetooth to this car, but not to Android Auto specifically, so we'll see how that goes. Unlock to continue. Next. And there we are. It launches itself. You see, we still have the, the same. The race determines whether the Hush. U.S. Senate remains under. See, we still have the same split screen layout. You got your Android Auto there with your maps. Other than that, you got settings, YouTube music. Everything works well. Android Auto doesn't look quite as good as Apple CarPlay, but that is not the vehicle's fault. That's just the design of both apps. All right, let's get on the road. Music cuts out just for a quick second when you start the vehicle. speeds, turn the music down, let you hear what the K5 sounds like at 70. Mind you, I will close the sunroof, the visor, or shade thing. Oh, 
pretty well refined for a vehicle of this price and class. Decent amount of road noise, but wind noise and engine noise are not bad at all. Alright, this next song can test the limits of an audio system by throwing a lot of sound at it, a lot of different instruments, really testing multiple channels and speakers. So let's see how the K5 handles it. like most bow systems I test, it's safe. Whenever a manufacturer throws a Bose audio system into a car around this price point, it's a known quantity. They know that they're not going to get anything outstanding, but it's also not going to be bad or harsh on any sort of music. It's coming in at a very solid 7. The audio system sounds fine enough. If you listen to pop music, Sirius XM, that sort of thing, it's going to sound good. If you listen to more complex, uncompressed, lossless type music like this, you're not going to be wowed, but it's also not going to sound sloppy. Same with the touchscreen, it's it's all, I mean it works fine, I could appreciate a little bit nicer uh, contrast and slightly easier to use system look a little better, but it's, it's certainly not bad, it's fine. Nothing is remarkable, nothing is egregious. In this class, uh, I'm giving it about a 6.5 or a 7 as well. 
don't really need to step up to it. Audio files aren't going to be impressed, but I'm sure it sounds better than the basic systems. So I hope you guys found that informative. If you want to see more on the K5, check the links in our description to our other K5 videos, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.